and I tried to say, I was planning to say a lot of things, but I will cut it very short. Um, ben, Senya said, you told me, you tell about your life. Skip that. It's no time for that discussion. Uh, what I'm trying to say... We, I'm sorry, we still haven't gotten your name. Okay, my name is Kenneth Johansson. I, I think we should introduce you, because uh, Kenneth Johansson is a former director of Malmö, um, Moderna Mosaic, so oh, I think... Malmö Art Museum, pardon, oh. in Malmö, so we, we should definitely... I, I was, we wanted to introduce you. We have a, a very young and wonderful uh, moderator here. We're just learning the ropes of all these things, but uh, this this is really uh, you know a person of significance, and thank you for coming. Yeah, of course. And uh, please please do tell us a few words about your personal uh, kind of involvement in these first, issues. First of all, I must say I'm very honored to be here. And um, the second thing is you have to excuse my poor English. And, and uh, about myself, okay, I take a little. <laughs> my name is Kenneth Jermans, and I'm the former museum director. Oh, in Malmö, yeah. uh, and uh, after that I was director of culture in Gothenburg for the town, for the municipality, and I ended up, so to say, as a uh, uh, director general for the Swedish Art Council. I stopped at uh, 31st of December last year, but I'm still uh, connected with the, the Roma question. I was born and raised in a small village in the middle of Scania, it's called Hrobi. And this municipality goes together with the three or four other municipalities. Municipalities are known as the Nazi part of Scania. You know, uh, Jopik and all these guys, they are there. They, and Sverigedemokraterna, uh, or the right-wing neo-Nazis, or whatever we call them in Sweden, who is the third biggest one. Some of these municipalities, the biggest one, and uh, how I've been working with uh, Roma Question as a museum director and so on, but also with political things, like we made an exhibition about uh, Scania and Nazism. And what surprises me as a person is that when I grew up, when I was 15 years, I'm born in the 50s, that people could make jokes about Jewish people, about Roma people, terrible jokes but that was really connected with the Holocaust. And this uh, thing goes on and goes on. And I think that uh, you inherit these things. Because my family was anti-racist, working class, poor, whatever. But they were no racists. And I never got that feeling from my home, but I've heard it all the time around me. The Jewish people in this village, very low profile. I didn't even know that my old school uh, companions were Jewish. The Roma people was really not existing. There was some travelers who was known. They were known as, oh, be afraid of these guys, because they are violent. And the only day in Herbe when the Roma people was accepted was when there was summer market. For two days they were allowed to camp on a terrible camping ground, selling their stuff, dancing, singing, out they go. And now they were told as lazy, parasitic, thieves, as a child, you, you think, how come these guys will be like this and uh, we'll play with them in the park and so on? Because, you know, children are smarter than we grow. It's really like that. And um, another thing that is connected to me as a person is that uh, I never met my grandfather. And he, when he died, I was around 50 years old, and some of my aunt and uncles I hadn't met either. And at the funeral, my mother invited all her sisters and brothers, there was a lot of them. And I was sitting beside my aunt and saying, who was my uh, grandfather? 
really. Well, you know, we're a little bit shame about it, and there could be some kind of problem, but he was what we call a tinker, or a tata of Svenska, or traveler. And I said, oh, what, what interesting. I'm just making an exhibition about the Roma people in Malmö together with the Romans. <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, my sister, my brother, and some of the, uh, these aunts and uncles went to see the, the, the travelers meeting and so on. But, that's my private story, so to say. But there's a bigger story in that. My wife comes from Casuando. It's very far north. It's a north village in this, in this country. And she, when she was, uh, not in my age, because she's much younger than she, uh -huh. but when she was grown up, really, she understood that he had, she had Sami and Mienkeli, two other minorities inside herself, one way or another. And no one told her either. And that's the way you do deal with history. You keep it low profile. You keep a mask on. You only take it off when you're safe. And I can do that because, uh, don't uh, take me wrong, I don't consider myself a Roma. I have never, I can't the word Romanist. Bakhtala is the word. <laughs> <laughs> but to take off and put on masks, it's a very complicated thing, and we all do that, all the time. But uh, I can understand my mother and so on, that they were hiding the identity. Because if you can't do that, it's only human that you do it. But if you can't, and there, there's the trouble, uh, then you're in deep trouble, so to say. And I know the time is very short, so I, I, I will jump from this thing to... Uh, I, I, I was, as a museum director, we went to this uh, exhibition, and made it together with the Roma people, and the political people in Malmö told me like this, oh, it will be a problem, they will steal the museum from you, and, and uh, you know, you wake up in the morning and nothing in your pockets, and uh, all that rubbish. <laughs> and even my own staff said, this will be a problem. And uh, the political system, it really works like this. If you just do it, they will get problem. If you don't listen to them, what they say, just go ahead and do it. It will freak out somewhere in their system. So they, they can't stop you. And, and uh, my staff at the museum, the personnel there, they... Uh, I invited Monica Kallas, who is an elder Romney in, in Malmö. And she spoke with the staff at one and a half, two hours. Were you there? No. No, not And you, you, you see, the, there was totally quiet in the room. Nothing. It was like everybody listening. And after that, many people amongst museum staff came to me and said, OK, <coughs> now we're getting what you're trying to do. Because my idea was, if you take the worst of the worst, the most stigmatized group in the country, point them out and say, this is the Swedish guys we are living together with, and women. And uh, by taking the most stigmatized group, you could show something. But uh, when I saw the situation for the Roma people, I didn't understand, uh, I didn't believe my own eyes. It's so bloody terrible, actually, excuse me for swearing, but it's so terrible, not only in Sweden, of course, but especially for me to understand the repression the, 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 the Roma people is uh, open for every day. 
It's not acceptable. And if I think you agree with all this, so I don't have to say that over and over again. I want to jump over to the final. This high-tech paper I, I was trying to put together. Uh, uh, how do we do this so we stop this yobbing, all this evil stuff? I don't think I have an answer. I'm not so particularly optimistic, I actually, to, see, to tell the truth. But one thing I, I um, tried to, to make when I was director of Malmö and also director general for the Swedish Art Council was that the Roma, the Roma people must have their own institution, run by, governed by, controlled by the Romas. That must be a final thing, because without that, you will be projects, and it will, it, it will grow, and it will die, and it will go like this. But the jobics will stay there. Yes. And so, Roma institutions, financed by the government, in Sweden on national level, but this international uh, thing you talk about, I think that's very interesting. The other thing is that, as I see it, the Roma people must organize themselves in a political point of view. Not by voting and all that. Do that, of course. But by trying to make a political force that's positive for the Romas, skip the rest. I mean, whatever about the pollution of the Baltic Sea or something like that. You just focus on the, on the Roma question and try to go mainstreaming with that question. Because in Europe you will be a lot of votes on that. And the third thing, as I see it, Gadja must help. You can't do it without us. I'm sorry to say, but it's not possible. You have to have help from some gathering. And, uh, and finally, as I see it, it's a shame of the Swedish police to make a computer register over Roma people. It's a shame, totally shame. And it's unbelievable that they are not convicted. convicted. It's, so, the laws must be followed, and I also should say that they should be harder, much harder. It should be very expensive to be racist. So, and, and all these things can only happen if the Roma take the question to the table. Okay.